we can sometimes use L'Hopital's rule to find the limits of products, even though L'Hopital's rule is stated for quotients. The idea behind this is as follows. Suppose you're taking the limit of a product. And suppose that one of these terms is going to zero and the other is going to infinity. This is an indeterminate form Zero times pretty much anything is zero. Infinity times pretty much anything is infinity. So you see these terms are clashing with one another. F's trying to bring the product to zero. G is trying to bring the product to infinity. And there are no guarantees here, but you can try the following. Rewrite this product as a quotient. There are two ways you could do this. And one of these quotients is going to be zero over zero. And the other is going to be infinity over infinity. So they're both indeterminate forms, and we can try to use L'Hopital's rule to find them. I wouldn't say this trick has the best hit rate, but let's do an example where it does work. Let's try to compute the limit as x goes to zero of the square root of x times the natural log of x. And at zero, the square root is continuous, and the square root of x is just going to the square root of zero which is zero, the natural logarithm has a vertical asymptote at zero. It's going to negative infinity. So this is an indeterminate form of this type, we can try one or both of the following. It could be that one of these will work out. It could be that both of these will work out. Could be that neither of these will work out. And rather than dive in blindly, let's think this through. I mean, I'm rewriting this limit. So you can probably see that I've already made up 
my mind about which of these I want to try, but why did I select this limit? Well, my rationale is that the natural log is going to get to simpler when we take its derivative. It's going to turn into one divided by x. Meanwhile, one over the natural log is only going to get more complicated when you take its derivative. Negative one over the natural log squared times one over x. So taking the derivative of this seems to me like it's going to make things worse instead of better. Let's see if my decision to try this is justified by the results. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. The derivative of this is negative one over two x to the three halves. Um, x to the negative one half becomes negative one half x. We subtract one, we get negative three halves. And you see I rewrote this negative exponential by putting x to the positive three halves in the denominator. Well, if you went ahead and tried to take the limit now using continuity, you'd get a division by zero error. But this big fraction can be simplified. We'll multiply top and bottom of this large fraction by the reciprocal of this small fraction. And we get no negative two X to the one half power. When we multiply the number, the denominator by its own reciprocal, of course it goes away. When we multiply the numerator by a two, negative two, x to the three halves, x to the three halves divided by x is x to the one half. And now we can apply continuity. This limit is zero. We can just plug zero into this continuous function and get zero. And let's verify this graphically. Here is the square root of x times the natural log of x. And we verify that as x gets small, this curve is going up to the origin. Y is approaching zero.